Hello, these short videos were created to introduce Columbus Food functionality, functionality that are enhancements built seamlessly into the Microsoft Dynamics NAV solution. Using examples, we'll highlight key Columbus Food functionality that is being used by the baking industry today. For many years, Columbus has worked with various types of bakeries and their product lines. Columbus has the solution, experience, and support to meet bakeries' unique ERP system challenges. This specific video highlights Columbus Foods, recipes, batch scheduling, and production recording and reporting. The key topics will be intermediate recipes and finished goods packaging, intermediates batch planning for production, and actual production reporting. Let's start by looking at Columbus's recipes. Looking at this recipe or formula for dough, we see the number and name. A where use lists for us the intermediates that this formula is assigned. In this example, the dough is our batch item. Next, take a look at the versions. Each of these represent a unique formula for the intermediate. The certified is currently being used in production, while version three is under R&D. Let's look at the R&D version. The general fast tab maintains base information about the version. The start date and status of a version can change as often and as needed. Lines Fast tab maintains the input data, the actual recipes and possibly instructions themselves. This item requires Columbus's pre-process activity, an activity required to be completed prior to production's use of this item, defrosting, mixing, measuring, or other examples. Columbus's lot preferences are assigned to any component item which requires lot specific attributes to be considered valid. This ensures the right ingredients are being used for consistency. Columbus's unapproved items allow for R&D to work with recipes to investigate the impact of potentially new items being used. And finally, a phantom bomb can be used to isolate a subprocess without maintaining that as an intermediate. Please note the extrapolation of the unit cost as well. The Equipment Fast tab is where you indicate the equipment used. It includes the min and max capacity quantities and the fixed and variable times it takes to produce the item. Routings can be utilized to outline production processes and locations. Costing Fast tab is where you can enter an activity-based costing occurred during the production of the formula version. The resource that is entered on a line can be a person, machine, or other. The formula batch size facts box displays the input and output weight and the volume for the formula version, as well as the formula version's density. The formula cost by weight and volume and the formula cost active give per unit information both about this version and the active version for comparison purposes. This is a finished good item. The production bomb number field maintains the packaging bomb number and Columbus's production grouping item indicates the intermediate item used to produce this finished good item. Looking at the lines fast tab for that packaging bomb, we can see it takes six of the intermediate items plus packaging to complete. Nav and Columbus offer full production planning and scheduling tools, but here we're focusing on one tool to plan batches for a bakery. We first run Columbus's batch planning worksheet to filter by location and to find how far out we want to view demand. Our three batch planning panes are giving us views of the finished good items, the equipment by day, and the ordered detail. In addition, we can see visibility to maintenance on that equipment. This is possible because Columbus has fully integrated a maintenance manual granule built right into NAV. Next, we start planning. Selecting the item involved in the batch will determine the total batch quantity. Equipment to produce the intermediate item can be selected. There can be splits between equipment or a single equipment selected. Either way, based on earlier setup, the batch quantities are calculated. The minimum allowed batch size means that there will be a residual amount of intermediate produced. Planning calculates what can be done with this and the user can make the final decision. The finished goods package orders will display any equipment that's been assigned and the user again determines the planning. Finally, once completed, we can generate production orders. Again, this is a very selective view of what Columbus offers. Bakeries that produce in batches need an ERP solution that allows them to produce multiple products from a single item, dough in this example, including regrind items, toppings, and scaling yields up and down based on batch sizes or ingredients. Our final topic is production reporting. During or following the production process, reporting takes place. 
Columbus's experience working with bakeries is extensive, from a paper-driven, after-the-fact process to full real-time consumption and output postings, including integrations to key equipments like scales and label makers. Working with any method, Columbus offers a tool called batch reporting. This tool gives the baker a view of any previously posted production activity, allowing for entry and correcting postings. We've entered in the production order number and the system has pulled up our intermediate and packaging production orders. There are three panes with the first showing production orders. The output pane is where we can assign lot numbers and enter quantities. Reviewing or entering quantities on the consumption pane gives over and under quantity variances. Selecting a lot that does not conform to lot preferences will require confirmation. We'll repeat this process for the second batch, so I'll go faster. At posting, we have the system telling us that one of the item lots has a lot status equal to scrap, a status that does not allow us to consume. So we'll switch to the correct item lot and the posting process is completed. Next, we post the output and consumption for the two baked finished good items, recording output. Our first finished good item is an exact weight, so the system calculates the alternate weight for us. Compare that to the second finished good item, which is a catch weight item. So we must enter the weight of the 68 cases. On purpose, we enter a weight outside the 10% tolerance setup, and the system alerts us. This helps to maintain data integrity. For consumption, we need to consume the intermediate item by selecting the correct lot. We repeat this for the second consumption, this time selecting multiple lots. This maintains the lot tracking integrity required for a bakery. Finally, we'll add an additional third line for the packaging item. We do this to indicate that a quantity was scrapped. This improves our yields and costing accuracy. Our final posting message is that we haven't consumed all the anticipated quantity, again, maintaining data integrity. Columbus offers yields and costing by pound reporting out of the box with the system. A note, while not shown here, Copi product formulas and item processes are part of Columbus food granules. If either of these are important, please let us know. That completes this overview video. We anticipate you may have more questions, and we welcome the chance to discuss further your business needs. Thank you for viewing.